Welcome back YouTube. As you can see, we have a working oscilloscope. I'm going through the uh, procedure for calibrating it in the manual. And by the way, while the case is off this, there's a thousand volts on this wire right there. And on the back of the intensity control and the focus control, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 to 1,000 volts. So if you grab around behind there, you have to be very careful. I always run everything on a tr isolation transformer if I uh, have a chassis open, which I do. It won't always pre necessarily prevent a shock. I could still ground myself somehow and get shocked, but it, at least it's not grounded to my uh, house ground through the plug. Uh, it just eliminates one possibility of grounding. So I'm playing around with the controls and it seemed it's a little flaky at first and I think my controls are still dirty. I did spray them out a little bit with deoxid as much as I could get it in there but uh, I didn't open up any of the pots. I'm hoping with use it'll, uh, it'll get better. It's a little flaky at times. but it's working. I'm able to adjust the height and the width of the trace. It's weird, it kind of wraps around itself like a circle. It's kind of cool. You gotta stretch that out. And uh, it's working pretty good. I'll be right back. Okay. The XYL was on the phone there with the niece and I shut the door. So I made the adjustments it said and it said you should have this signal and I do. And it says, uh, and I'm not going to go through all the things on how I got to that point. Lock the pattern on the screen, reduce the cycling if necessary. This checked indicates that the sweep generator is operating normally at a frequency of 60 slash 4 or 15 cycles per second. Okay, next test. Disconnect the jumper from 60 cycle test terminal. Turn off the power. Connect the free end of the jumper to terminal ZZ2 on the tube bracket. Set the selector to 80, blah blah blah. Turn the power on. Okay, this is like a, um, yeah, I'll set this up and then I'll come back. Okay, YouTube, it's a little dark here, but uh, so we can see the screen. What, I, what you had to do, and this is part of just the calibration, is you leave one test signal into the vertical input. You take the other end and you clip it to that post there, which is all in the instructions. That's ZZ2. Um, and then you adjust your uh, frequency veneer and your voltage which you'll see this thing turn until you get this thing looking like that which it does I just want to get it centered up nicely looks pretty good Okay, then you turn trimmer TT, which I looked at the schematic and determined it's this trimmer right here. I'll be putting my screwdriver in there. Sorry for swinging this camera all over the place. Uh, we're going to be putting the trimmer screwdriver in there, and we're going to turn it until we have a properly adjusted trimmer, which would be a straight line like that basically getting rid of this um, triangular uh, output here, triangular corner signal. And you can see it tightening up. Let's go too far the other way. Yeah, see now you can see that thing deflecting upward. And we can see it deflecting downward. And now we can see it right in the middle. It's almost like it's twisted back behind it. 
that looks pretty good. I'm just going to adjust my vertical deflection a little bit. And I'm going to do it one more time. We have it deflecting upward. We have it deflecting downward. We have it in the metal. So that's that adjustment. The adjustment made are to compensate the vertical input attenuators so they are not frequency conscious. This compensation preserves excellent frequency response of the vertical amplifier even with a high input attenuation. The chassis should now be installed in the cabinet pass the line cord through the black hole, blah, 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 and screw it up. So that was the last adjustment uh, to be made. And uh, this thing appears to be working very nicely. Uh, everything's working as the book says it's supposed to work. I did uh, have one little problem that I happened off camera. When I powered it up the one time, I was getting a popping noise. It sounded like a capacitor shorting, and I looked down at my high voltage cap at the base of it. This is the, uh, the can one right there. I had neglected to clip off the lead of one of my resistors that jumps across two of the pins and it was touching ground and it was making a little popping noise so I eliminated that problem and I haven't had it making any noise since and everything is working as it should so there you go I'll put this back in the cabinet and thus conclude my uh, little restoration of the Heath kit oscilloscope which you will hopefully see in future videos being used to align and uh, diagnose and troubleshoot my radio collection. So this is Tom saying 73.